Hi, and welcome to another edition of Newsmakers Journal of the Vaccine Year. I'm Jerry Roberts. It is Friday, November 26th, Black Friday, big Christmas shopping day. And we have a special guest uh, in line with that uh, theme, Mike Eliason, a man of many hats, but uh, most of all, uh, one of the great news photographers from Santa Barbara and indeed anywhere who is out with a new book of his photographs, uh, which you will be able to uh, purchase on Black Friday or any uh, of the uh, other 28 days of Christmas shopping between <laughs> between now and Christmas. Hey, Mikey, how you doing? I'm doing okay. The book is only available in days that end in Y. So okay. just so you know. All right. All right. You got to learn to sell this thing a little harder. Believe me, I'll, I'll help okay. you as we go here. All right. Uh, so have you got a, uh, do you happen to have an image of the book uh, before? I do. Hold on as I'm going to be very clunky here with how I uh, do the picture. Can you see that? No, I can't see anything. Okay, here, hold on. Let me keep working. Keep I'll keep working, working on, on that. I'm selling it. All right. So uh, the book is out now, correct? It came out when last week? Um, yes, it did. There it is. Do you have it now? I have it there now, it and and I also have your uh, your <laughs> your desktop and the uh, index. So all of those all right things we worked on and advanced didn't work, but Santa Barbara and beyond, uh, the photography of Michael Eliason. There it is, and uh, available for purchase at Chaucer's and other local bookstores as well. Exactly. Chaucer's, uh, it'll be Santa Barbara Gift Baskets, Tecolote Bookstore, the Mesa Bookstore, San Ysidro Pharmacy, the Maritime Museum. So a lot of different places. Cool. All right. Very good. And uh, how many uh, images uh, of yours are in the book? It's 160 pages and uh, it's about 80% Santa Barbara County images. 10% U.S. from various locations and 10% international pictures. All right. And um, and it also, I, I understand, increase in, includes a piercingly insightful uh, introduction and, and, and profile of a man and his music. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's another added feature. Uh, that you'll it was, it was, yes. Uh, you were very gracious for uh, doing the introduction and, uh, and John Palmentary did the foreword on it. Um, so I, I greatly appreciate it. Although you know me, the, uh, the whole time I was kicking and screaming and yeah, when I, I see the I, finished product, I, 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 I said, I, oh, there's too many words, too many words. I couldn't get another yeah, picture. Can we get a couple more photos in here? Palmentary <laughs> had the easy thing doing the forward. That, you know, that's TV guys. They don't, they don't use yeah. the word. So, so anyway. Well, you're looking okay, at him as the well, warm-up band. He was uh, the warm-up band well, for you. Say again? So he was the warm-up band for you. So you have to look at it that way. Okay. But I, 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 no, I sincerely, I, I appreciate, I truly appreciate um, both uh, you and John taking the time and, and for the generous uh, words that you both uh, put in the book. It was it was very heartfelt, and I and and you know me, I'm I do not take uh, uh, accolades nicely or appropriately, and I get embarrassed and stuff. But okay, I, I thank, do appreciate. Thank, them. Thanks, Mike. All right. Well, look, let's talk about you first of all. And for those who don't right. know, Mike is one of the uh, well, I I think the best news photographer uh, I've ever worked with, and certainly one of the top two uh, new uh, photographers period in, uh, in Santa Barbara County, uh, worked many years uh, in the newspaper business, um, now is the PIO of the Santa Barbara uh, County uh, Fire Department where his uh, photos of all of our many disasters uh, are featured on the Twitter feed and Facebook and social media. And also uh, a lot of news organizations pick them up uh, around the world. So Mike's uh, eye and, and image making, I think is, is well known to people who've lived here a long time. But let's just talk a little bit about uh, how you got to where you are. You, you, you grew up here, you're a, you're a carp guy, correct? Correct, yeah, I grew up in Carpinteria, which is you know a wonderful small town to grow up in. Um, my father was a police officer there in town, uh, one of the original seven police officers 
So growing up in a town like that with your dad as the local cop, you really couldn't get, get away with much. So, but uh, it was a great place to grow up and I still have a lot of lifelong friends that still live there. And uh, he, uh, among other things, uh, liked air shows. And, and uh, as I recall, your, uh, the, the first time you took pictures was of an air show uh, with a, what, a hundred dollar camera from Montgomery Ward or something? Well, that, that yeah, that was uh, actually the first pictures I took. He borrowed a friend's camera. Um, so we went out to take pictures of an air show at the Blue Angels. And so that's before I had never really experienced, you know, the change, the lenses that you can change and stuff. So I was really taken with the zoom lens and the wide angle and how it looked through the through the camera. And I took a class in high school um, and I got a B in it. I, you know, and uh, I did, it, you know, with with that. And then I took a couple of classes in college. So I've really only taken, you know, two, two or three real photo classes and the rest has been mostly self-taught and stuff. But uh, um, yeah, that was what got me into taking pictures. I, I went to the, see the Blue Angels and I was very fortunate enough years later to actually get to fly with the Blue Angels. So it was a full circle moment, but um, the book's dedicated to my dad just for that reason. He passed away um, right before COVID hit uh, in February of 2020. And so the book's dedicated uh, you know, to him. Nice, all right. Uh, and then um, you uh, worked as a firefighter uh, for a while um, early on and then had a choice between uh, uh, being a firefighter or a photographer and decided you liked your sleep, I guess, more. <laughs> or what was, the, what was the criteria of that choice? Yeah, it was, uh, it was I, I wanted to give back to the community and, and I um, was a reserve firefighter in Carpinteria in Summerlin for eight years. And that really got me interested in that profession. And so I was on kind of a two track. I was the fire service and as well as taking pictures. And uh, it was kind of both were kind of part time. And I kind of said, whichever I go with first gets full time. That's what I'll go with. And I went into photography for 25 years doing that. Um, but still keeping the relationships, you know, the friendships that I, that I had met and that circle widened. And I got uh, back into the fire service in 2012, um, part-time working uh, with County Fire and then full-time. Um, so I'm back in the fire service again, which is great. It, and I appreciate the fire family welcoming me back. And, and I, I, part of my job is, you know, explaining to the public what's going on in the community and documenting it and getting the images out to the media for the media's use. Yeah. And in the interest of full disclosure, we should say you and I worked together for um, uh, yeah. not enough years, really, but uh, at uh, at a local uh, paper. And uh, uh, I, re I remember I was so pleased the first time you came back from a fire because I had come down from San Francisco where, where we didn't have photographers. We had photojournalists and they were they were always looking. I, I called them fires without flames because I'd always get like, you know, <laughs> a drip of water in somebody's rear view mirror from a hose or something. Uh. You came back with all these action shots and I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So you really are, uh, and, and I mean that sincerely, the best um, news photographer that I've worked with, but this is a little bit different. Uh, the, the photos in in this book or what uh, I don't know we might call it a business wild art or something talk about the photos uh, and kind of the theme and the sensibility that you bring to it well the pictures uh, that we did was I, I posted stuff on social media kind of infrequently and a lot of the stuff was just you know vacations or here or there you know your normal social media stuff but when COVID began and we were right in the height of the political season, I started saying everybody was freaking out or pissed at their neighbors or whatever. I uh, said, okay, I'm just gonna um, post one picture a day on my social media page, just so it's not COVID, not political. Um, because, and, and just to try and make somebody's, take somebody's mind off of everything for 30 seconds. Cause I know there's a lot to view on social media and, and I appreciate people spending the time to look. And I thought, oh, this will last six months, eight months, I'll be done. And, you know, <laughs> here I am a year and a half into it. And I still have to, every morning I wake up, I go, what was something to post now? So I, I, it's 
I just, I appreciate the community. I, I, I try to find something different. A lot of the pictures are just, like you said, slice of life or wild art, just everyday situations. There's not a real lot of hard news on there. When I do go to incidents or for work fires or the things, I, I post the pictures on there as well as my, my work Twitter feed. And that's just to keep people up to date of what's going on in the community, keep them informed and, and let them know what's going on. Yeah. Um... I mean, one of the things about your photographs, um, you know, obviously, you know, composition and cropping and light and all those things, you know, that you, you, you're a master of the, the basic technology of photographs, but you also, in my experience, um, and, and I think it's true of this book, you really evoke uh, an emotional response in the, in, in the person who's, who's viewing the image. Um, and that could be, you know, anywhere from a laugh to, you know, really feeling sad or elated or whatever. How does that happen? Well, that's a good question. And it's a challenge. And it's, it's something that I've always tried to do. Um, you know, you're trying to, you know, elevate the reader is when that was, was our philosophy always was to try and as elevate the reader and show them what's really going on. And if you can evoke that emotional response um, from your image, and then that's what you're hoped for. You try to, you know, present something that people can feel. And that's always been a nice thing to me when people can say, hey, I, I, I have your picture on my refrigerator that you took 20 years ago, or I remember you took a picture of my daughter, and now she's married and has a kid or something like that. Something that that the community can remember and, 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 and embrace. And that's something I've always tried to do and tried to make it interesting you know uh, and and try to make it something that they can remember and you know and there's a mental checklist that you go through you know dominant foreground contributing background graphic element all the different things that you're taught and you learn to do but I don't know I just kind of see something and, and I try to take picture and, and try to make it um, somewhat memorable for people and, and I've been very fortunate in that that people respond positively to the pictures yeah yeah. Well, uh, let's see. A picture's worth a thousand words. We've probably, I don't know, what do you think? Twenty-five thousand words so far. So why don't we look at some why don't we look at some pictures uh, of in okay. the inside of the book? I'm still looking at your uh, your index there, but I can see the okay. uh, all right. Talk about yeah, I'm gonna just let you narrate these as you go and now do you see this one? Do you see the light? Yeah, I see the picture. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is this is uh uh, rare, rare for California lightning storm that we we had. This was a tough couple of years ago, and everybody in Texas or Tampa are you know laughing at us right now because this is an everyday occurrence for them. But for us, it wasn't. You know, we had this uh, terrible event that happened in Montecito, and we were on edge, and we knew heavier storms were coming. So what I did was I went out to naturally what I went out to Stern's Wharf, which is what can go wrong. I'm on a wood wharf with a metal tripod and an electrical storm what what could possibly go wrong Are you wearing that? your umbrella head yes exactly and i'm holding my nine iron too so that makes it even better and uh so i have two apps i have a bunch of apps on my phone but the apps i use for this was there's a, a radar that shows tracks where the storm is going and another one was a, a real-time lightning app so i saw the storm was approaching from the south and the west and so I knew it was tracking towards, you know, over the Mesa and going to head kind of across State Street. So I went out to the wharf, but I thought in case, you know, it did shift that if it went over to the ocean, all I had to do was just turn around 180 degrees and I'd still be able to get the lightning strikes. And there were, for here, there were a lot of lightnings. It was well over a thousand strikes that we had in, in Southern California that night, which is a lot for us. And I got this lightning storm as it went across. And then I got this one, and this is a 60 second exposure uh, of the multiple wow. strikes with Stern's Wharf, you know, the Harbor restaurant stuff. And, and this picture got a lot of play. It was on Good Morning America and CBS Morning News and David Muir and the front page of the LA Times and all these different places that had this uh, um, lightning that, that they thought was a, a, an interesting photo. And I had a whole series of them and this was the one that most people responded to. Yeah, okay. And then let's see, going around, we have this one you see here. Yeah. Okay. So this gotta, was, yeah, good. Yeah. 
So this was uh, one of those foggy nights and everybody always asks, well, peace, do you ever sleep? And how do you get all these pictures? Well, yeah, a lot of it's just, you know, you, you know, from just the job is you drive around and you look for things and you, you people watch and you try and see different environments. Well, this was one night where it was super foggy and uh, the foghorn out at the harbor was going off and I looked and you couldn't even see this other side of the street. So it was like 10 o'clock at night, 1030 at night. And I said, I got to go out and look around for something. So I went driving down along the waterfront and then I went up by the train station and I, I saw the way the train station looked from State Street. So I parked that Reagan Center there and, and I walked out to the platform between the two tracks and, and uh, I just kind of sat there and waited for someone to come walking you know, along the tracks and I, I cannot fish. I, I am not a fisherman. I do not have the patience to sit there and wait, but I can sit here and wait for 90 minutes for one person to come walking by for a picture. And uh, oh, luck, fortunately, it only took about 10 minutes. And I saw this person walking towards me as he got closer and closer. I got a couple of frames and I, I kind of like the moodiness of the lights to help. And that that little uh, feel has a very kind of a street Edward Hoppery type of feel to it. And, yeah. And I got fortunate to what I was getting. Nice. And then um, surf is a big deal here in the Pacific. And so. This was on a windy afternoon out there at Santa Barbara Point or Ledbetter Beach. And uh, it was, you know, I I've never surfed a day in my life, but uh, there weren't a lot of people out there. They were starting to go out there, but it looked like it was kind of sloppy. And so this one uh, surfer was walking out to the point and he was luckily, he was still just silhouetted another two steps and then he would be in sunlight. But I liked it as he was silhouetted out there checking the conditions before he, he headed he, out. On that. He seems to, uh, to me, uh, speaking of emotional responses, to uh, perhaps be thinking better of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really remember. I saw him walk around the point, but I never saw him surfing. So I don't know if he walked around and thought the better of it. But as you can see, there was really nobody else out there for it. So that was uh, those are pretty rough conditions for that. Didn't You really didn't get a lot of waves to, to ride, per se. It just looks like a lot of white water that you were chasing behind yeah and then this one you know in santa barbara we have this little celebration every summer i don't know if you've heard of it uh, old spanish days goes back a ways but if if you like horses then this is the event for you is the uh the the historical parade on usually on fridays and i i don't know how they're going to do that if they're going to have parades this year or if they go up state street because of the dining now how they're going to configure that mayor randy is, mayor randy is going to take it take care of it he's all over the parade. oh okay all right I, I mean i'm sure there's a way they can do it just have one side have dining and go up or i don't know how they can do it but I, i'm sure they'll figure out something but this is the the parade going under the state street uh, 101 underpass and on your right is southbound and on your left is the northbound and I was under there because I saw the graphic element of it. And, and I waited for several horses. And as you know, there's a lot of horses in this parade. And some were darker and they'd kind of disappeared and some were lighter. And, and in the way that the costume the rider was wearing, it just kind of all popped and worked together. So this is just one of those. Uh, there are several pictures from you know local events, the fiestas. There's a couple pictures. And then we have a couple from the holiday, uh, the, the boat parade, and then also the solstice. But with those in a book, you you kind of immediately date it. So everybody's going to say, oh, I remember that solstice parade. That was five years ago. Well, I didn't want to do it. So I've tried to pick generic -y enough stuff where it's evergreen and, and won't date it too badly. Um, but there were a couple pictures in there from that. Plus, I believe this guy has been in the parade about 104 years. So that I Yes, I think so. I think he, he's, he's ha with Hattie out there. I think he's up there in the age of been a long time writer. So this was uh, down there, one of the low, super low tides that we have in December. And oh, this wow. was down this was down below Ledbetter Beach, a shoreline park there. And everybody was out looking at the tide pools. And so I went down there with a long lens and kind of compressed as the sun was setting, you get this kind of otherworldly look to it of all the people looking for their, uh, their treasures in the tide pools. Yeah, that, that is very kind of dystopian feel it's either that or annette funicello in uh, uh beach blanket uh, beach part oh, beach blanket bingo or whatever that was yes or, yes <laughs> or et e phone home or beach blanket bimbo or bing bingo that's, that's, that's a great photo thanks 
And this is out at Kachuma Lake, because again, it's all about Santa Barbara County too. So there's stuff in from a lot of stuff from the San Ynez Valley. And um, out there, the fog, that's why the, the grapes go, do so well, is you have this fog that comes in overnight and it burns off by 9, 30, 10 o'clock every morning. And this is at Lake Kachuma. And that morning fog is lifting as the scholars out there doing their morning workout. And there were a couple going zigzagging back and forth. And uh, the fog just was lifting just right. And you've got a little green on the hills. And as you know, in the valley, there's two seasons in the San Ynez Valley, green or brown. And this is the green season and then last couple months. And then you have the brown season, which lasts a couple months until we get more rain. But yeah, so this is just out of Kachuma. Nice. So it was real kind of a quiet morning out there. Um, this was, again, one of those Fiesta pictures. I said I put, tried to put something that was kind of a little, little evergreen, but still you could understand right away what it was. One of the dancers at the courthouse, um, Noche de Ronda, um, practicing right around sunset, uh, was there performing just as the sun starts to go down. It really popped with the silhouette with the, the cloud or the silhouettes of the palm trees with the dancer. Mm -hmm. It looks like a statue. It's, it's really... Great photo. So this one, as in with the book, now the book, I took a majority of the pictures with my 35 millimeter, if you will, uh, uh, digital SLR with the interchangeable lenses and stuff like that. But other ones I did with the drone. And then some of the pictures actually in the book, I actually, I always have my phone with me and phones are so much better now with how big the file sizes are. So some of the pictures in there are with my phone and you really can't tell which really is which <laughs> except for the drone. And now I'm going to tell you the story about drones just because you have to listen to this story. So when you, if you choose to use a drone, make sure you read all of the instructions, okay? Don't just read part of the book, read all of them. So I had a first generation drone and it would go up and then when it was going to land, you could land it or you could just grab the skid and you hold it and then put it down. Well, I got a second generation or third generation one and I flew it with my brother-in-law out to the islands and there were some blue whales and I said, oh, I'm going to send it up there and I sent it up to go take pictures of the blue whales and the battery was getting low and I brought it back and I tried to grab it and it would lift up because it had collision avoidance and I kept trying to put it down and it would fly up and bring it down, come it up and finally the battery turned to its fail safe mode and see this is where you read page eight, not just stop at page seven. So it went back to where we launched it from, rather than on page, the next page, you can learn to come back to the controller. So it, I watched it fly away and then get lower and lower and lower. Then all of a sudden the screen went black as it's now at the bottom of the Pacific off Anacapa Island. So read the instructions is what I'm telling you. Oh, man. So oh, right. I waited, I waited. Well, I have about a similar months. problem with my Roomba, by the way. <laughs> Maybe we should talk uh, so about it. So I waited about eight months and I bought another one and it sat in the box for two months and I watched every YouTube video and I read every instruction book. And so now I can fly it with confidence, but that's another element to this, this type of photography is now you have a third dimension to work with and you got to figure out the, how you're going to compose it. You got to take in consideration, battery life, distance, air space, all these different things while you're taking and composing the picture and then you know bring it back to you when you're done. So it brings a new element to the photography, especially for local, but this is the, you know, the wet Wednesday race out there from the yacht club off the breakwater as they're jockeying for the start of their race. But it just, it brings a whole new element to photography. And I try to minimize it. I try not to do a drone shot for drone shot sake, but more to try and, you know, kind of as Walt Disney would always say, plus an image, so I'm, or plus something. So I'm trying to plus it by with this angle that you normally don't get to see. I remember uh, when we worked together, uh, you would take a, this annual shot of all the employees and, and, and scale like a 35 foot ladder to get up there. I had to, yes. you wouldn't have to do that anymore. That's, uh, of course, no, you don't no, have that many it's such a great idea. I mean, I remember Paul Wellman, he from the Indy, he used to do this. He'd have a pool, a pool, you know, those pool sticks that you like, not a pool shooting pool, but a pool cleaning, you know, with the little net on it. And he rigged it so you can have a thread on there and hold your camera on it. So he would hold, have this, you know, 15 foot stick you can lift up and take a picture with. And 
we would always talk about how, boy, wouldn't it be great if we could put a camera on a helicopter or an airplane or something, and then drones came out. It's perfect. So this is another one. This is a, a drone shot off uh, the harbor. Um, a little juvenile gray whale was was in, and, and I flew the drone, and he was, the Marine Mammal Institute was aware of it. It wasn't in any distress. It just was coming in uh, close to shore. So this is just past the breakers. It's only about 50 yards offshore and uh, got some frames of him as he was, you know, you know, spouting and then his tail fluke going up in the air. And, and then a couple of days later, he went back out to sea. Nice. But this is just another image that you could see, could get with the drone, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, let's see here. So this is out there in one of those late afternoon kind of pink hue moments of the yeah. paddle border yeah. or sweeper out there just kind of enjoying all the place to himself so just just another kind of a catch-all you know slice of life for santa barbara um showing you know the community that we're now that mike we're I, i'm noticing a theme of a of a lonely individual uh in the, <laughs> is this the same well, guy that you like pay to show up at different places it's a mannequin that I just, it floats. So I had the, the wetsuit keeps it floating. So I just kind of sit out there. Actually, it's only about six inches tall and it's a little remote control person that I send around out there for things. So this is the San Inez Valley on, during the green season. Um, this is in March, right? Following a storm and all the hills with the rolling hills and the folds have that emerald green look to it. Yeah. Uh, I was driving up Figueroa Mountain, um, wow. looking back and kind of seeing the look for the valley. So a little same, another thing, one of the valley, the green season, one of the barns out there. But for this year, for, for here, you know, when we get those January storms, oh. we get those January storms and this is right there at the entrance to the Harbor. So you have the South swell bringing that, that wave in. And then the wave previously is on its way back and they collide and you get this clash and then the splash of all the water as it hit, they collide and the surfers are there, you know, enjoying every moment of it and then trying to catch the wave to come into the harbor as they, as they surf off that spot. But the rare occurrence, it happens really only when you have those winter storms and then a lot of surfers, you know, congregate there at the, uh, at the harbor entrance. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. So these are down at the entrance at the, at the mouth of the uh, Mission Creek. So these uh, um, birds, they are black skimmers. They, and that's how they, that's how they feed. They go right along the edge. Their lower, lower bill is longer than the top bill and they scoop up for any kind of fish or little critters that they can get. And it's really kind of cool to see them as they all come in and glide right along the top of the water. Um, and they got a couple of them together. Usually, you just get one at a time, but they were, you know, fortunate to get two of the different ones. Nice. Uh, let's see. So this is um, this is actually out at Sandpiper Golf Course. Um, this is off of the bottom of eleven, between eleven and twelve. And people wonder, well, like what are you doing out there? Well, yeah. The reason yeah, no. The, well, the reason that this picture go, wow, how did you see that picture? How did you know that? Well, I played the golf course, but that's not the point. The point was the reason I saw this picture because I was in the sand trap when I hit the ball. So, so if I had hit the green, then I probably never would have taken this picture, but I was in the sand trap and uh, it was one of those gray mornings. So I just had my, this is a camera phone picture and I just uh, grabbed a picture of the, the way the landscaping looked with the sand trap and, and uh and the palm tree, I think it's a big queen, queen and palm mm -hmm. um, in, in the picture. So, yeah, I mean, that's what happens. You know, you can plan all you want, want a picture, but if, if I hit the ball on the, on the green, it wouldn't have happened. So I just happened to, to be in the, <laughs> hit my ball in the right spot. Speaking at the right of time. lonely individuals. Yes. You in the sand trap. Okay. Exactly. Uh, so this is kind of a moody one of a bunch of horses out there in the Valley on a, on a cold, you know, winter day, they were all kind of staring, checking at me out, checking me out, but just kind of like the way the, the horses kind of cooperated and, and looked at me um, for the picture, just 
kind of more of a moody shot. Same with the owls. These are some little baby owlets that um, wow. were up at the Lake Los Caneros. The, the mother or the father, I don't know which one it was, but the adult one was right nearby too. But these two little ones were right there kind of trying to take a nap. And I one woke up and was checking me out as I was getting a picture of them in the eucalyptus tree. Wow. But I like owls, so it was always kind of cool to see them uh, sitting there. So just a little bit of just a little bit of everything as you're as you find it as you're kind of going around and same thing with the eagle there is a bald eagle a lot of people don't know them but we have we have bald eagles you know in santa barbara county too uh, uh, up in the san Inez valley there's a pair that live um over by at lake achuma another one over by the alisal lake and then another one i've seen off figaro mountain so there are, they are out there and this is the one i saw in solvang uh, perched in a tree um so that's really cool to see when you really don't expect it. I, I, I've seen more bald eagles so far. I spent a month in Alaska and I went to Homer looking for this place where all these bald eagles are supposed to congregate and I missed them by two weeks. And so I've seen more bald eagles in Santa Barbara County than I've seen in Alaska. So that's kind of discouraging. You could but, look uh, it up. Yeah. I right, want you yeah. to show us about three more, Mike. Okay. All right. Um, so this one, so this is what I, I, if you, this is just a long lens. This is, this is the sun setting. And I took this, I was way out by East Beach volleyball courts. And these are the palm trees sitting off, uh, off the Mesa off shoreline drive there. So this is with a 600 millimeter lens with a doubler. So it's a 1200 millimeter lens. And I'm looking right at the sun with a, basically a telescope, if you will. So I don't, I don't recommend that. So what I would have you do is what I did was I got a film that is basically like a welder's mask type of film. And that's over the front of the lens. So that's how it looks black around the sky area as well. And so I could look safely through the, the camera and I got some frames as the progression as the sun was going down with those palm trees. And, ha and how I do this is another, another app I have. It's called Photo Pills. And it does all the geometry for you, which is I welcome because I'm you know having to do that all for all these many years, and this makes it a lot easier. Where you can figure out where you are, and it will show you the path and the line where the sun and the moon are going to be coming up or going down. And so this really takes a lot of that guesswork out, and you can just plan where you need to be at that right time, and then it will show the track of where that's going to be, which has helped tremendously. But yeah, never. I don't really recommend it. So it's basically binoculars I was looking through at the sun. So it, it, without the filter, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And it could have damaged, you could damage your eyes, definitely, but also your camera. More important. Let's see. When, and then I'll show you, I'll, I'll end, you with, end you with this. How's that? Um, oh, I know. So that. this... Well, everybody knows this angle, and, and this is the quintessential, you know, Santa Barbara photo, but where you always see the pictures, you see it, the photo is taken from the tower of the courthouse showing that, mm -hmm. that you know, round uh, roof and the red tiles looking towards Montecito, and, and, you know, the star of the courthouse really is the tower there, so I, I sent the drone up. And I'm hovering up over uh, the library, and this shows that same view, but it includes the front of the courthouse with the with the tower as well, but still getting those red tiles and you know the clear afternoon of a December day with you know the coastline and the hills and, and everything that that Santa Barbara is about. So that's kind of why I was you know wanted to go up there and and do this kind of picture. So again, a lot of the pictures they're, they're pictures and places that you've all been, and it's just you know. Uh, my little pictures of appreciation for Santa Barbara and all that it's, you know, it's given to me and all that I've, I've, I've loved over the years of, of working in this town and being a part of this town. All right. Can you put the book back up? Uh, yeah. uh, guys, people don't need to see us uh, talking, but uh, they, they okay. see the book. I, uh, yeah. I mean, one of the interesting stories that I've thought in interviewing you for the introduction was uh, the first time you got to tell visually the story of Santa Barbara, you were what, 19 and, uh, yeah. your high school principal, your old high school principal at Carp High, uh, prevailed upon you to, to go around the County and take some pictures 
for that uh, uh, exhibition, that standing exhibition they have at the state capitol in the lobby where every all of the 58 counties uh, have a little uh, a presentation there. Uh, so that was that must have been pretty cool. I mean, even though, yeah. as you described it, I mean, they were kind of stock images or what you would expect, but that was that's a pretty cool thing in 19. Yeah, as when you're that young, it was pretty neat. And and my former principal, Ray Hill, he took, we took a history trip group up there and we had done it the, you know, the two years before. Um, and then we, he took a group up there and every county has a little display. So, you know, it's a two foot by four foot display case, you know, showcasing all the counties in the state. And in and, and Santa Barbara, we were able to, to pre pre provide the pictures for it. And so he asked me to, you know, get a bunch of pictures. So I drove all around the county one time and got them all nice and looking. And then that, that year's class took them up and put them in the, in the county. And they were representing Santa Barbara County for a couple of years before they rotated them out with another, you know, display. So that was, that was cool that, that, you know, I was able to represent the county in a, in a young age and, it, and then the, the, you know, and it's, I've always just tried to, I mean, Santa Barbara has its problems like every other county, but it's still just everybody knows Santa Barbara County and, uh, and I'm fortunate to live here and to know a lot of people here and to and to call this place home. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the other thing, uh, which I guess is, you know, clear by implication, but, you know, having worked for so long, both for the fire service or fire departments and 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 in newspapers, I mean, you know, the county uh, and another interesting story is you you spent a couple of years teaching out at city college and you would uh, defy your students to go take a shot of some place that you couldn't identify in Santa Barbara County and the only person who ever succeeded cheated is that uh, if I got that one right yeah well what I did what I did for 10 years, I, I taught photojournalism at City College and we broke it down. It was a 16 week course and we broke it down to world, you know, real world type of assignments. One week was portraits, one was sports, one was news, one was hard news, one was elections, portraits, feature pictures, stuff like that, photo story. And then we would project them on the wall. It was, you know, 30 kids in the class, 30, 40 kids. And then we would project them and we'd critique them. And it got because I've I just know this town so well in the community that you know they'd um, they'd post a picture up and, and before I would start talking I'd say oh you're right down there at uh, Ortega and State you know or oh this is Alice Keck Park or oh you're on the Mesa and then we start talking about the picture and then they'd start really I'd start hearing this how does he know that how does he know where this is and it became this thing like every picture I would say immediately know where it was and it got to kind of like see if we can stump the professor here and then and then this one person had a picture up and just tried to run it through and I said huh I started asking well I don't recognize this and people were like what we well, couldn't recognize it and I started talking and so I started asking her more and more questions as to the picture and sure enough after uh, a few questions she she caved and the picture was actually taken in uh, South America uh, on our vacation a couple of years earlier so it wasn't Santa Barbara and and so I managed to say well okay this they're supposed to be you're supposed to have taken the picture in that week in between classes. So you really didn't go travel to South America in that week. So let's see if we can get you something a little more local. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so the book is Santa Barbara and, uh, and Beyond the Photography of Michael Eliasson. It's available at all our great uh, local bookstores. I assume it's also available at uh, that awful uh, mail, uh, that uh, online place, uh, Amazon. But uh, uh, you know, if you're looking for a, a terrific uh, Santa Barbara-centric uh, gift for somebody uh, for uh, for the holidays, uh, this is really a, a, a great buy. And of course, I'm going to get in trouble if I don't mention the publisher. Then it's published by who, uh, Mike? <laughs> it's by Shoreline Publishing, and that's where you can buy it. ShorelinePublishing.com as well. But it's uh, uh, Patty Kelly and Jim Buckley. And and they and and I thankful because you you know how I am not a marketer of my stuff. So um, thankfully we they they approached me. They really wanted to do this book. Um, and and so 
I was just had to give them a bunch of pictures and Patty, who did a phenomenal job of the design and putting the book together, she designed it and, and Jim's doing all the marketing and the hustling and getting the pictures and the books out to the public. And, and I appreciate and, and thank them for all their hard work in getting this done. But uh, yeah, it's under Shoreline Publishing and, and um, Jim Buckley and uh, Patty Kelly. And we should, we should note that's the real Jim Buckley. Uh, who, Correct. Who, who's, who's doing that. The, <laughs> the voice of your Santa Barbara Foresters. All right. Uh, yes. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for taking the time and uh, uh, for sharing some of your uh, images with it. And uh, good luck with the book. Good luck with the, with our 12 uh, month fire season. And uh, hopefully we yeah. won't be seeing uh, too much of your stuff on Twitter there. And, and we'll just be uh, seeing this, uh, th th this kind of stuff in the, in the near future. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you for having me, Jerry. And thank you for your helping and go Dodgers. No, no, oh, no, don't. Uh, we're going to have to cut that little part. All right. Take care, Mikey. Uh, thank you. All right. Hey, can you send me this image so I can use it for the top of the column? Sure. Uh, I think that's better than a, another mugshot of you. Uh, yeah, we didn't get to the fires, but I, that, that's OK. I don't, you know, I don't. That's fine. I that's don't. fine. I think that's okay. All right, send me that, and I'll uh, I'll send this to half now, and then uh, I'll post something uh, in a couple of hours. All right, sounds good. All right, brother, take her easy. Thank you. All right.